All right, hey everybody. So we're here with a couple of folks from the, the Geo Developer Relations team, and I'm from the Chrome Developer Relations team. My name is Eric Beidelman. Um, I guess go ahead and introduce yourself, yeah. tell the world who you I, are. My name is Luke May. I'm from the Sydney office, working on the Maps team. And uh, much like Luke, except my name is different. My name is Chris. I also work in the Sydney office on the Maps Developer Relations team. Cool. And I'm on Chrome Developer Relations, as I said, and we uh, we just got done launching Santa Tracker this year. So. In years past, Santa Tracker has been this thing that we've uh, we've done on the, the Geo Developer Relations team, and this year we kind of beefed it up and want to talk a little bit about the tech behind sort of what we worked on. So, who wants to show off some cool stuff first? I think we can start with with me. Start with you. Yeah, you got the goods. I got the goods. All right. So what we got here is Santa's Village. That's Santa's Village. Yeah, this is Santa's Village, and it's just counting down to when he takes off. Christmas is coming up and it's going to fly around. That's nice. Yeah. So this is the web sort of web experience of this year. Yeah, so this totally. is much different than last year, I would say. Yeah, last year. So this year we've got a whole couple of components with web, but we really went targeted modern browsers this year and did some really cool things. Cool. So you can see we've got a plane flying along. You can do some fun things That's like really change the time of day. And you can also then go and interact. So we've got this whole village which parallaxes as you move across yeah. the screen, which is kind of cool. And so you can actually, how, how are you doing that? Maybe explain a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so. That. CSS transformations, obviously, okay. it's the, the best way we found out to, the way to do this instead of just moving backgrounds, that sort of stuff. So we have a couple of divs and we're just shifting them left and right. And the ones at the foreground are really massive, ones at the back ones aren't so big. And That's cool. So there's just, just images with CSS. Just images with CSS. So see, it turns out CSS is pretty powerful these yeah. days if you haven't played with it recently. Yeah, it's cool. Um, how about the, what is the, the countdown? So what, that's, that's until Santa arrives or what's going on there? Yeah, this is until he arrives at his village and he's about to take off. So oh, okay. he's still gathering all his toys and that sort of stuff. So he hasn't done his flight yet. That's cool. Yeah, but this countdown is pretty cool. How the heck did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> that looks complicated. Yeah, it was kind of complicated. So each each digit is actually four divs. Mm. So I've got a back face div, and then we've got the top half of an image, uh, the letter at the top, and we've got another one, another two at the bottom. And so we've got one transformation which moves something halfway, yeah. and then timed is another one that starts to finish it off, and then that's how we get like the back face, and it just flips. So you can just see it, this little bit of CSS. Huh? Just a little, all CSS. That's great. And if you don't have CSS animations, like your browser doesn't support it, it just changes. So it just still just works. It just flex. It just works, it just flex. That's cool, yeah. that's really cool. So how is that being like calculated client side as far as the time countdown or how is that? Oh, we have a special magical Santa server which tells us like when Santa is going to go off. Oh wow, did you work with the elves on that? We one? did. We we worked with them for a while now to try to coordinate the right time for him to take off. That's cool, man. Yeah. All right. So, well, it's fun. You can you know, the, some interesting things around the village, like you can click on the balloons and they'll fly around. The elves are just going for so the So, I mean, kids are going to have a ball with this, right? We There's hope a so, of, yeah. A lot of interactivity. A lot of interactivity. Uh, any sort of hidden gems that you There's going to be Easter eggs about? throughout the whole site, okay. so I'm not going to like show a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But we've got some fun things, like if we go along, you can click on. Let's go to what? Like this one's kind of cool. This is one of my favorite. So got a little scene. Oh, wow. like, yeah. So these are the <laughs> these are Santa's elves at the moment testing his reindeer in a wind tunnel to make sure they're aerodynamic. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. He looks pretty aerodynamic. He does look aerodynamic. Really so is, this, is this canvas or how are you? This doing is this? all this is CSS HTML5? three animations. It's all CSS. All CSS. The whole thing is all CSS. Wow. Yeah. I mean there's a bunch of images all over the place and a couple of repeating images. But just like the little dials and everything is all CSS. So why like why CSS over something like Canvas or you know, like SVG or well, we wanted to region. support a lot more browsers. Yeah. We wanted to easily fall back. So if you didn't have animations, you know, they just stand still. But it's still an experience that you'll like. So what 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 browsers can folks uh, enjoy Santa on? Uh, all modern browsers. I mean, browsers. yeah, all modern browsers, and then the, for special stuff like the interaction and the animations and that sort of stuff. So anything that kind of supports CSS three and keyframe animations. Cool. Yeah, which is pretty good. Which is good support these days. As yeah, far as the, the modern latest HTML5 browsers. Yeah, browsers. and if you don't have it, it just falls back. Yeah, yeah. But then we uh, let's find some other fun things. So there's this whole village where you can explore some really cool things. But so this is very much more of an interactive experience than than last year. Like last year, I think you uh, right, you get to yeah. track Santa, know where he is, and and sort of see see him as he flies through. But this is much more of like interacting, playing with like some games yeah. which is really cool. I'd say it's, I'd say it's, it's much more playful. Uh, last year was more of a Google Earth experience where you sort of track 
uh, Santa in a sort of realistic way, where this is, I think it's more jovial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a bit more fun before yeah. Santa takes yeah. off, so you can explore the village. And, and the, yeah. The, the, yeah, the games and the Easter eggs are amazing. Speaking of games. Oh, you got one. We've got a game here, oh, we've got some sound? sounds. Yeah. So here's a little Santa racer game. So, you can so I think Paul Paul Lewis did this game, right? Yeah. The, the infamous Paul Lewis, uh, who's a big fan of WebGL and has done a lot of great stuff. Um, if, you've, if you're in that community, this looks so, really fun. So how's this one built? Is this a canvas or? Is yeah. It so we did a couple of invitations with our games. We did uh, another one, bef another one of the games, which is all done in CSS. Let me just pause. <laughs> as much as we love the sound, um, this one is actually all done in canvas. So it, the, it's really smooth and fluid, and we can do a lot of cool things. So we've got another game which, if we're lucky, we might show you, and that was all done in CSS. So we wanted to like push the boundary, but not always concentrate on just one technology. We wanted to see if we could do a couple of different things. Yeah, you might as well. I mean, we have all this stuff in HTML5 now that we can do, and certainly, you know, even more than last year, I would say, uh, and every year it gets it's more powerful. So yeah. why not have a game with awesome physics and sound and yeah. web audio API and all the cool can almost drift do. Santa's sleigh. You've clearly been practicing. Oh yeah, I well, someone has to test this. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is important QA testing. Yes. Um, cool. Is there anything else that you want to highlight? Well, so this is the countdown before okay. Santa takes off, and then we can I can actually switch to once Santa's actually in flight, and we can show what that's about if you like. Let's do it. Let's I mean, that's that's it. what Santa Tracker is all about, right? Is actually yeah. tracking to see where he is. Yeah. So here's Santa as he's actually flying around. So. You know, he's, we've got a dashboard of Santa, so we can see where he's flying to, what, where he was, and we can get some fun facts, like presents delivered and what he's currently doing. That's cool, man. Yeah. So and his little status message updates when he, he visits a new location. Yeah, yeah. And then if you, you know, if you are kind of bored of watching Santa for the moment, you can uh -huh. zoom out and kind of exp explore the village, I mean, explore the world, sorry, and see all the locations where he's been so far. And you can click on these and find out some fun facts about that location. That's it's a cool. bit educational. Yeah, well a bit fun. educational. You can see some cool photos. You can go through the photos. Nice. What, what is powering all the, the photos and everything like that? So, that uh, so we have a, a content service that's built on App Engine. Um, so we've basically aggregated a whole bunch of content. Uh, so the photos come from Panoramio uh, via their API. And uh, Wikipedia have uh, provided us content. It's a Creative Commons. Um, right. So that's all served up when you click through to a location. That's nice. Yeah. And then we also have Wikipedia, which is kind of cool. Uh, oh. Santa's, Santa's reading Wikipedia on his Nexus 10. Nice. Yeah. See, Santa, Santa's technologically advanced. Yeah, he's he got, is. He's got he, the latest and greatest. Yeah. Yep. That's so, very cool. Yeah, and that, that'll support CSS3 as well. Man, I, I'm just impressed with like all the, the cool CSS stuff that, that can be done these days. Yeah. So we can see some fun things that right now and, are actually Santa's And so the map delivery. itself, the map is just the map. Google Map, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a Google Map. We okay. styled it. Um, we've just got normal markers. Santa's a marker. See, right now he's That's delivering really presents. So he's having, he's having a lot of fun. Um, and we can see the presents delivered and weather and all that sort of stuff. And then we'll, we'll we've got an Earth button as well, so you can watch Earth. Oh, so Google Earth is still part of uh, Yeah, Google Earth is experience. still part of it. So okay, nice. he'll sit there and watch Earth and go from there. Nice. Yeah. Well, this certainly wouldn't be possible it's, without it's all the work that Chris has done. I know, I know you spent countless hours on <laughs> developing sort of the, what are we calling it, the Santa service? Yes. The it's, it's all about the children. It, it, <laughs> so it is. Absolutely. <laughs> so do you want to talk a little bit about sort of what's powering? So we, we have the, the web experience that Luke has been showing, um, all the sort of where Santa's visiting, all that information's coming from someplace. Where is it coming from? So uh, all, all, of the, uh, all of the things that, uh, where you can track Santa are run from this App Engine app. Um, so that includes the web that we've looked at, uh, the Chrome extension, which we'll look at soon. Um, there's a Google Earth experience, if you have Google Earth on your mobile. And there's an Android app as well. Uh, so yeah, these all come from a, uh, an App Engine app that basically tells you where Santa is. That's cool. Um, so it's, it's a service that scales very well. Yeah, very well. Uh, so it's built on Go, so it's very fast. Mm. Um, you know, we've, we've paid a lot of attention to caching and making sure that things run smoothly. That's cool. So, yeah. You, uh, do you have any code to show? Do you, do you want to give a little sneak peek of the, the API itself? Or? Uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Santa's um, top secret. Yeah, top secret. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's probably best described, I think. So um, when, you, when you go to the website, the service will tell you the, the time according to Google. So uh, mm -hmm. you know, if, you've, if you've got some computer with a, a clock that's incorrect, you're, you're going to see where Santa actually is. Um, so that's what happens first. Uh, then it'll go and fetch the route. So 
Santa's given us his itinerary ahead of time, and uh, everyone's synchronized on that. That's so, cool. Um, so so that service is powering all of the clients. So the, the Chrome extension that we haven't seen yet, uh, the, the web the app here, all the, the Android and mobile apps. So everybody, theoretically, you fire up the app on these respective devices or these, these platforms, and everybody's kind of in sync. And yeah, I mean, if really you had cool. them side by side, the idea is to create that um, realism that, that Santa's actually in that place. He's right? only in one place at one time. It's true. Yeah. And yeah. he is real. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So this is really nice, man. This is this is definitely a, a way way cooler experience than, than last year, I would say. Yeah, Much more to it. Um, Luke, do you want to show the, the port? I mean, I'm yeah, the yeah, portion yeah. I worked on. Just I was going to say, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> we've had all the glory. Do you want to see? Sure, sure. We should show what you've done. So uh, again, I work on the, the Chrome team, so we wanted to come out with a nice little Chrome extension that that folks could use to sort of experience and, and track Santa and interact with the Santa tracker um, before he takes off on his route. And so we put together a extension, a nice little Chrome extension. Turn the sound on because you added some cool stuff. I do. So I have a, I have a little click when the the TikTok the countdown timer flips its little bit. Um, so that's using Web Audio API. If you guys are into the HTML5 audio scene, um, brand new API. And what's kind of nice about a Chrome extension is that I don't have to worry about <laughs> browser support, right? I know yeah, my browser. Nice. Yeah. So you guys you guys couldn't unfortunately have the, the same um, guarantee, but. So what, what's good about the Web Audio API? What does that give us? Web Audio API is great. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, it, essentially, it, you can schedule sound at very precise times. So in the case of something like this countdown timer where the digits are flipping, um, Luke has a nice little library that he wrote to, to do a lot of this animation work. And, um, and so he fires off an event, and I just you know, I attach a listener to that event and then, and then call the Web Audio API with a, a tick sound. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. The event was TikTok. I think it was TikTok, yeah, yeah which, was cool. which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, yeah, and so I, actually, it was really nice that we, we got to share a lot of the same code base. Uh, I, I took your counter stuff and basically I just made a media query out yeah. of it. Right, it's, this counter is the exact same one that's on the village. Yeah, yeah. So we didn't have to duplicate any work there, and um, and same same parallax effect, the little animations, and the idea is that folks will will hit that explore Santa's village big red button there and and jump into the web app experience yeah. and sort of do the games and, and all the other stuff we built out. But if I don't way. want to go to Santa's village just yet, is there some other fun things? You don't, I can you do? don't have to. Look, I'm glad no. I'm glad you asked. Um, so you're on Google.com right now. One thing you can do with with Chrome extensions is um, inject uh, CSS and JavaScript and HTML on the page. So we have a couple of buttons at the the bottom there. Do you want to show off? Yeah, which one do you want to click on let's, first? Let's start off with the blimp. He's, he's going to click cool. on the blimp. Yeah. So this is all very reminiscent of all the assets you saw in the, the web experience. But So we got the blimp? We got the blimp. Now he's injected on. on oh, wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's our, that's our good buddy, the Web Audio <laughs> API. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be really fun you know, for, for kids to play with and sort of see this blimp on, yes. on any website you kind of come across using. You know, CSS filters there and animations and transitions and stuff. So how can you get the Chrome extension? Yeah, so you can go to the Chrome Web Store um, to, to get the Chrome extension, or we have a special build of Chrome that you can download, which also will have a nice Chrome thing. It has a great is a great theme uh, for the holidays, and it has the extension pre-installed, so you can uh, you can get that and kind of play with things and, and check them out. What else have we got here? Because yeah, I, I know sure. that you did some other cool things. So the uh, the snowflake is really cool. The snowflake is really that's, fun. That's one of my favorites. So if you, if you have a look here. Oh, that's that's very that's, that's very cute. That's very festive. So yeah, this is this is actually using Canvas, which is kind. Of, uh, I'll turn this out. <laughs> as much yeah. as we love it. As, as festive as it is, um, this is using Canvas and um, essentially using some of the properties with alpha, alpha transparency in Canvas. So if you want, so you can actually. Yeah, what can I do with you can, it? You can draw. It's, I can it's draw a with palette. It? So, so why don't you write the folks a, a message? There so you it's go. sort of like you're painting on a window, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, so there's a there's an alpha transparency property you can set in Canvas, uh -huh. and then it just basically bleeds through. So the whole screen has been filled up with Canvas. I've injected a Canvas on the page, and now we're. And then we so I know how to paint things <laughs> in Canvas. How do I how do I do the erasure? How did you do that? The erasure. Yeah. Um, it, it was tough. I actually looked at a few examples <laughs> online. Um, getting, it, getting it right so that you have sort of the, the snow that's overlaying the page and then bleeding the page through was kind of, was kind of tricky. Um, but it's basically just mouse events, right? And you, yeah. you, uh, you subscribe to those and the touch events, and then folks can paint. And Canvas just takes care of everything, yeah. which is really nice. And then I can defrost my browser. Defrost, right? yeah. Away. Well, in case you want to do a Google search. Right? <laughs> in case I want to <laughs> keep going you Google, and draw something new. Yeah, yeah. So it's cool. I, the, the Chrome extension is very much a companion to um, the other stuff that 
that you guys have worked on. Yeah. yeah. Was there any interesting things you did about how getting it from the Chrome extension and actually putting stuff in the browser, you know, we communicating between the two? Yeah. So, so you guys probably know this better than I do, but the the Maps API in a Chrome extension um, is is pretty difficult to use actually because. Yeah. Um, the manifest v2, there's uh, what's called content security policy restrictions. So you can't load in content from external domains, uh, which means Maps API is, is kind of out of the picture. Um, but we had to do some interesting things with, with a sandbox iframe of the, of the map and then kind of communicate with the Maps API um, to update Santa's position and whatnot on the map and, and sort of um, do post message and use iframe communication. Cool. So it was a little bit trickier than it really, you know, needs to be if you're building a web app. But ultimately, like um, the CSP restrictions are there to to keep users safe and secure. Cool. Any other details on the Chrome extension? Uh, what what else are we using? Um, request animation frames. We could again, like since it's a Chrome extension, we can take advantage of some of the latest features for animation and request animation frame is a is a great. Yeah, way. Yeah, and that's exactly how we're doing the parallax as well. Where yeah. we're we're doing the movement. You know, we're doing transformations, but we're doing it in a request animation frame. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, the, um, we're using SAS, so for our CSS, I think we're, yeah. we all chose that route just because it's a lot easier to maintain. And that way, we account. can have lots of individual files so that you're just using the countdown SAS file that I was using as well. Right. So, you know, we're, we're not duplicating. It helps with the cross browser, Absolutely. you know, vendor prefixes, yep. things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like you guys define variables, and I like you know I imported them into my style sheets, and then you just get it, them. It just it came for free. Yeah. Useful. So so when you're working in a big team that's kind of doing independent things but sharing a lot of stuff, it's a nice way to do it. Yeah. So we're also sharing a lot of JavaScript and yeah. HTML yeah. as well, right? Yep. So. And we're doing the standard Google stuff. All that all that code is compiled with Closure, um, so all minifi minified and. We get static. a lot of hits, so we got to reduce the yeah. uh, reduce the bandwidth. Yeah. Keep things so right. a lot of people are interested in, in where Santa is uh, is going. Yeah. yeah. But one, one fun, fun fact, fact we found, like when we were building this on a high DPI laptop, laptop, the performance when we first did it was really quite poor. Um, and then what we did is once we replaced every image with a high DPI version, the performance like improved dramatically. Yeah. And it was because the browser didn't have to spend time scaling up the image for the right the right size that the performance was just magically different. Yeah, so that was actually something I, I hadn't worked on a big project yet that required us to think about high definition, you know, retina displays, but these are prevalent now, and so we had to have, you know, two X images all over the place and make sure that looks good on the, on the folks that are having the high displays. Yeah. So do you guys want to talk a bit about mobile performance? Because I know that's, that's, you know, they have their limitations and they're a lot slower. Yeah, than absolutely. Well, the good absolutely. thing about that as well is because we got, we could then, because we're doing high DPI images for this, we could just give them to the mobile guys as yeah. well. So for the native app, because they could then also render, use those for high DPI images. Yeah. That's cool. So are there yeah. any other performance tricks? Any? Uh, well, there was a nifty tricks. one I uh, the, with, the, with the game. Yep. So with, mo with especially to make the game work well on uh, a mobile device, so instead of ha uh, having a, a, your asset and then saying display none and then showing it when you want, to keep it in the GPU memory, just transform it out of the screen space, but it will still s essentially stay in GPU. So then it doesn't have to keep reloading that texture. And that actually improved performance a lot for the commonly yeah. used, used and, images. And I know for, for a lot of mobile devices, the startup time for, for GPUs are, is a little bit slower. So you have to like, you know, you apply a CSS transform or something, and it takes a little bit more time. And so you get the kind of a janky effect. So doing something off screen is. Yeah. It's always the way to go, yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, I mean, we're really yeah, happy to yeah, offer yeah. a mobile experience this year. Last year, um, there's not really much to speak of, so yeah. we're definitely paving the way. Yeah. yeah. Media queries for the win, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, we when this gets uh, too small as well, we've got a nice responsive layout that kind of works well for a mobile or smaller screen. Yep. Nice. No yeah, separate, no separate, completely separate experience. Yes. Yeah. Just, just all the same code, which helps a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Can you click on the sun again? That was really cool. Yeah. That's I like it. All the clouds are done. I wish I had that power to. Oh, I don't want to turn the balloon. No, <laughs> oh yeah, I've done the balloon. But there'll be a couple more Easter eggs around that you'll have to hunt for, which will very be very cool. So but yes. Any, so you say the best uh, for last. Gangnam style uh, <laughs> Easter eggs? TBA maybe. Maybe TBA. maybe <laughs> maybe we'll put some Easter eggs in here, but you'll have to go look for them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We're not going to make them easy to find. <laughs> well, very cool. So Santa Tracker 2012, way way more than the last year. Yeah. Uh, Chrome, Geo. Uh, social, Android, a lot of different sort of product areas and, and APIs at play here. Yeah. So very cool. We all, we all came together and, and pulled it off, which is really neat. And App Engine as well, I guess. Well, because we all love Santa. 
Everybody wants and it. And it's all for the children. It is all for the children. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Really appreciate your time. And uh, check out Santa Tracker. You can get uh, Santa Tracker on the Chrome Web Store, the extension. And, and google.com slash Santa Tracker for the actual site. For the site. And of course, uh, Google Play for the, the Android app.